All right, now what if somebody says, yes, I have a plan, a very specific plan, and I want to do it? At that point, there still may be some hope that we can continue to manage this client safely at the current level of care. So when somebody says, yes, I'm going to do it, I'm still going to ask one more question before I call for emergency support. My question is, can you tell me what, if you do, do end your life, then what will happen? I'm trying to find out what's the purpose of that. It may be that I just want to end my suffering. I feel so bad now there's no other way out. Or it may be that I'm trying to escape some legal problems. You know, maybe a college student at the end of the semester so overwhelmed by academics that they're thinking of taking their lives and maybe a medical withdrawal will be another way of solving that problem. Can I come up with another way of getting your needs met? What about this one, the desire to hurt someone else? It's not a common cause for suicide, but it's not altogether rare. A client comes to you and says, do I want to hurt myself? Yep, and I know how I'm going to do it. I've got a gun, I've got bullets, I'm going to kill myself tonight when my roommate's out. All right, sounding like you need emergency mental health services, but let me ask you before I do that, if you do take your life like this, what will be the outcome? then she'll know how bad she hurt me and she'll hurt the way I hurt. Ah, so your suicide is to hurt someone else. Who is this person you're talking about here? Well, the psychologist that I was seeing before saw me for sessions for about a year and then we started dating and I was sleeping with my psychologist, but then she left the clinic. She left the clinic, stopped calling me back, abandoned me entirely. I've been in such pain since then that I really want to get back at her and hurt her the way she hurt me. All right. Still sounding like an emergency, but let me ask you another question. I understand the desire for revenge and justice. I, I get that. But have you thought of any other strategies to get that need met? Well, I have thought about popping her tires. Okay, I like that better. And in Pennsylvania, you don't have an obligation to report tire popping. I mean, you probably won't support and facilitate that. But you don't have a duty to warn for tire popping. I already like that better. What else have you thought about? Well, my sister has given me a book about forgiveness, and I've thought about you know, a spiritual model of forgiveness as letting go, but I'm not sure if that's for me. Okay. Uh, what else have you considered? Last night, I was looking at the website for the Board of Registration for Psychologists. You're liking this one better already? Better than the tire popping? Keep going. And I was thinking maybe if, uh, if I filed a complaint against the psychologist for an inappropriate dual relationship. All right. Now, I cannot go with you to pop her tires, but I could support you in making this uh, complaint to the Board of Registration for Psychologists. And I need to let you know that that process could take weeks or longer. But I want you to imagine that at the end of that process, if you're successful and her license is revoked and she has no way of earning a living and she's standing in her front lawn with a for sale sign and the grass is growing because she can't afford to have the grass grown and her hair is matted and she's crying and she's wearing a barrel because she can't afford clothes. How would that feel for you? Well, that would be sweet. Yep. And if I support you in this, would you be able to maintain your safety for the weeks or even months that it might take to go through this process? And the client might say, you know, as we talk about it, I'm realizing, what if she doesn't read the obituaries? Because people under 70 don't typically read, right? Raise your hand if you read the obituaries every day. <laughs> I'm not going to ask. Yeah, my, what if my therapist doesn't read the obituaries? She doesn't even learn, right? And yet, if we do this thing that we, you and I are talking about, yes, that's, that's my course of action. So if, at this point, you believe that the client is able to maintain his safety, uh, you would certainly want to reassess risk real soon. Um, but you might feel that he doesn't need inpatient care at this point. You might. 